Hey gang, can someone please tell the guy from Green Day that October's here? I'm starting to get tired of the song. Anyways, enjoy the show! Welcome back to Creatures, Cavers, and Crafting. Today, guys, I'm going to be trying out some new stuff for myself. I'm going to attempt to sculpt. I'm going to make some silicone molds and try my hand at some casting. So pull up a chair. Should be an interesting episode. So for our first step, I'm going to take some green stuff. And this is how I'm going to make my mold. Now, you don't have to use green stuff. You might use something like air dry clay if you want to. Uh, I'm just going to use this because it's a little bit easier to work with. I am going to take a template. This is by Shifting Lands. You don't have to have a template like this. You can make your own template if you want. Maybe use some Legos. Or you could just maybe flatten this out on a surface and just cut it into like a square or whatever uh, size that you want. Now, one thing I want to note here is you can use some Vaseline or Sculptor Vaseline uh, down on your surface or around your template if you want. That'll make things a lot easier to remove and it won't stick as much to the surface. Uh, we're just going to remove the excess from the template like so and now we're just going to go ahead and pop that out of the template uh, here i am i'm just cutting the excess off uh, i'm using a tool here this is a sculpting tool but you could use maybe just a flat edge or a knife if you want next i'm going to take some skulls these are from green stuff world i'm just going to push them into the green stuff now you don't have to go out and buy any expensive skulls you can use dollar store skulls or anything that you have laying around maybe beads this is my secret weapon this is a paintbrush in uh, and what i've done is i've just pinched the middle out uh, using a pair of pliers and this is going to act as my template now if you've ever seen pictures of the catacombs of paris uh, you'll notice that they stack the bones long ways so that the ball joints uh, are facing out uh, it's kind of like stacking firewood. I know that's kind of morbid, uh, but that's what it looks like. Uh, so that's what my template is is trying to achieve. Uh, now, a word of advice here. You're seeing that when I'm doing this, I'm getting a little uh, sticking. You can use a little bit of Vaseline uh, to alleviate that. You don't want to gunk it up, just a little bit. And next, you can take a sculpting tool and just push out details if you need to. If things are a little crooked, you can use a flat edge to just kind of mash things together to get them even. So we're going to do that. We're going to add a few more skulls to the bottom. And once we're done, it should look something kind of like this. Again, guys, you don't have to rush out and buy expensive skulls to do this project. Maybe get those dollar store skulls. Maybe look at some beads uh, if you want to. Just keep in mind the size you're working with. Now I'm going to create a box to pour our silicone into and I'm just going to use some old foam core I had lying around. Uh, this doesn't have to be completely straight or even. We just want to create a box. Uh, if you have Legos, I've seen videos where people do this using Legos. So if you want to try that, you could skip this process altogether. Now what we're going to do is just kind of cut this out and we're going to use some hot glue to fasten the joints together. And once we have that done, what I'd also suggest is that you run uh, some glue down on the corners. Uh, let me just flip this around here. I'll probably put it down these corners and along the back. What we don't want is the silicone leaking out. So take a little extra time to make sure that doesn't happen. Now it's time to create our silicone. To do this, I'm going to use Umu 25. It comes in two separate compounds. We're going to pour this into two separate cups, mix them separately, then pour them into one cup. We're also going to stir that mixture, and we're going to take a disposable paintbrush and just paint this onto the sculpture. Now it's important to do this step as opposed to just directly pouring it because this is going to allow the silicone to get into the details of the sculpt. So be sure that you do this first, especially if you're using stuff that has very minute details. Once we're done with that, we're just going to go ahead and take the silicone and start to pour it into one single corner. What we don't want to do is just kind of pour this haphazardly. We want to allow the silicone to evenly distribute over your sculpt okay also when doing this you want to make sure that you're estimating enough silicone for the project it's easy to mix up too little of this and not have enough to do the job and it's also easy to over mix this and have too much so uh, gauge it see what you need to use 
once we're done with our pour we're just going to lightly tap it this is going to allow the silicone to settle more and also get out any air bubbles that might be trapped in there once our silicone has fully cured we can go ahead and tear the form apart and we can also go ahead and grab that sculpture out of the mold we just want to make sure to be careful we don't want to rip the silicone itself now we're going to take our mold we're going to use a little cornstarch you can use baby powder if you want they're both the same and we're just going to take a brush and paint into the nooks and crannies we want to make sure we get a nice dusting in there that's going to help us release the smooth cast Next, I'm going to take smooth cast, and as before, this comes in two compounds. So you want to mix these in smaller cups. Uh, you're only going to use a little portion, but you want to make sure that it's equal ratio, one to one of each compound. Now, what you want to do is you want to stir both of these like you did before with the silicone, then mix the two, stir appropriately. You only have about three to five minutes to work with this stuff. So once you have the two mixed, go ahead and pour it into the mold. And here we have our castings. Uh, notice all the detail uh, compared to the original are there. Um, really pleased on how these came out looking. Uh, now we're gonna apply these to our walls. I'm gonna use some XPS foam to create some archways. And first of all, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just trace out that casting from earlier. Uh, once we have this traced out, we're just going to remove uh, some of the foam so that we can recess that into the foam itself. Should look something kind of like this. And now we're just going to go ahead and use a pen and trace out some bricks. I'm also using a sculpting tool just to dig out uh, around the recesses. Uh, you want to make sure that you carry this all the way through, not just the front, but the sides and on top and on the back as well. We're also going to line this up so that we create a brick pattern. It should look something kind of like this. And lastly, we're going to just take some foil and go over this. This will add some texture. It'll get rid of a lot of those smooth areas that the foam may have. Now I'm going to take a page from Tabletop Witchcraft and use some laminate samples as a basing material. If you've watched his swamp video, he does this. Really great stuff. We're just going to cut this to fit the size of the wall. So once we have that laminate cut out, we're going to go ahead and use some hot glue to glue the walls down onto the base. We're also going to glue those skulls inside the recesses of the foam. Of course, we want to strengthen the foam by using some Mod Podge here. We'll allow the Mod Podge to set up and then we'll go over the base using Aveo earth texture paint. So once our Mod Podge and everything has dried, we're going to go ahead and black bomb this. Then we're going to go over it with a uniform gray. I'm going to also start to pick out the stones using suede, uh, a golden brown, an ash, a cafe latte, and I believe it's a leather red. Uh, you can match those as best you can. Now I'm going to apply a black wash. You can use a null and oil or if you have a pre-made black wash, you can do that. For the bones, I'm just going to use a screaming skull, allow that to dry and heat it with a sepia wash. And now a quick dry brushing of suede. Uh, this should tie everything in very nicely. So to add a bit more protection to the foam and paint, I'm going to use a Minwax polyacrylic varnish. This stuff is really great. It's water soluble, easy to clean up. It will dry clear, but it will have a shine after it dries. We're just going to take some Tessure Dull Coat and eliminate that shine. That Tessure is also going to provide an additional layer of protection to the piece. Lastly, we're going to apply some effects by using some Veo pigments on the stone. And we're also going to use some of that environmental Veo paint just to add some grime and slime. Let's see what this looks like on the table. There's a curse on our village. Our crops are diseased. Our livestock feeble and dying. Milk sour. Eggs rotten. We see he who does not share our plight. He who lives upon the hill with no burden. He who smiles and curtsies while we suffer. Warlock, we accuse thee. Warlock, we burn thee. Yet our torment continues. 
worse now than before. Our children. We atone. We atone. Yet our village dies. Our bones entombed in the catacombs. The warlock. Forever our master. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. It's October, one of my favorite times of the year. We're going to have plenty more spooky themed crafts coming your way. If you like those creepy videos, stick around. We've got tons of stuff for you. Anyways guys, if you haven't already and you're liking the videos, give me a thumbs up. Always could use another subscriber. Make sure that you're hitting that bell icon so you get notified when the next video comes out. More importantly, share this with someone that might like this type of video. Guys, also want to send you off with encouragement. Try something new. This was my first time making a silicone mold. And it was actually my first time casting something. And I think it came out really well. And I'm excited to do more of it. So go out there. Try something new. Develop that new skill. Be humble. You have to start somewhere. You'll get there. I promise you. You guys be safe. We'll talk to you soon. Catch you on the flip side. Goodbye.